Now entering the Bitcoin Podcast Network. to the Bitcoin Podcast, episode 261, and I'm your first host, Marcello. And I'm host number two, D. Host number three, Dr. Corey Petty. How was your week, guys? Hey, uh, how was our week? Uh, you guys can go first. No, I'll go, since I'm talking. <laughs> uh, week was long. Busy, busy, busy at work. But weekend has been fun. I got to see my niece and nephew, so I'm enjoying that. I heard you had a How doozy of a week. It was a uh, it was beefy. Can you get into <laughs> that? Are you capable of talking about any of that? I am on an NDA, but okay. it can was just like can you give like beefy. like insight into small businesses and mainly focus on small business, right? Yeah, I I, I consult with small businesses, and so all I say it's um. It's not really much detail I can get into, uh, but I will say I'm learning a lot about like the construction industry. I'll say that. Much. I'm just talking about like how, like based on your experience so far, not even this particular client, just like most businesses aren't run that well. It seems. Um, maybe, I will say maybe it's hard to say most because you're the like the yeah. ones you would be going to see would always have a problem because otherwise they would be calling a consulting agency. But <laughs> yeah, I I think like um. Uh, but um, I would say that, yeah, I think people go into small business. I'll say this. I'll keep it quick. Keep, people go into small business because they make a thing or they provide a service really well. And I don't think necessarily understand um, costs and profit and loss and and uh, things of that nature. So it makes running a business tough if you're not really digging into your your financials. And you mean they're not business? I run into them. Yeah, I mean, yeah. That's like just, just like, that, isn't that just the business? <laughs> like, it's the yeah. business part yeah. of doing something. Yeah. And well, they're so smart enough to hire you, though. They don't wait until they're out of business. Yeah, that's the good thing is that eventually they hire me and I come in and help them out. Like, hey, you know, because if you don't cost things right, then you can't price things right. And if you don't price things right, you end up pricing yourself at a loss, right? So you're going along your business. You're thinking everything is great because you're getting paid. But little do you know, you're like losing $5 every hour of your life because you didn't factor in every single thing and it and how that cost affects your business. So, um, yeah, it was, it was, it's uh, sometimes my weeks are chill. Sometimes they're got to do some digging, but it's busy. So, Hello, what about you? How was your week? Uh, it's cool. Learning how to play guitar. Your fingers hurt yet? They hurt. Give me your best drum mayor. I'm not there yet. Bow, bow, bow. You don't have to. You don't have to. You just, so I'm talking your like. Mouth. Yeah, I'm, I'm playing like your voice. I'm playing one chord and my fingers hurt. Give me it. Give that's, me That's a, the learning ah, curve yeah. of guitar. You know how when you play Guitar Hero, it's not like that in real life. <laughs> it's not. Oh, it's so thought, good at Guitar Hero though. Yeah, <laughs> I thought if you master the pinky, you win. I thought yeah, that's all the guitar was about playing was the pinky. I wish. Uh, uh, get, no, there's a lot of calluses. Oh, yeah. Um, there's a lot of ripped skin and uh, feelings of arthritis. Ouch! But it's fun because I guess uh, when you get a guitar, you gotta learn. That's how yeah. that goes. And uh, I've been paying attention to crypto this week, which is kind of cool. Oh yeah, what you, yeah. you pay attention to? Uh, I just I learned that uh, you know I was sim hacked before it was cool because it seems to be a hot topic this week. Yeah, man, it's getting pretty, it's getting pretty uh, pretty nuts these days. I'm a little annoyed because it's it's probably a hot button topic 
because people don't write about it until it happens to them. You know, it's kind of like a guy who's donated to a cancer fund after he gets cancer. It was always a big deal. You know, it, it should have always brought more attention than just this past week. It, it's a really big, vulnerable spot in crypto. But I think it's a better late than spot and, and just the internet security yeah. altogether because most of the things yeah. that people back their stuff up to is recoverable by sending a, a like a like a password recovery thing to your to your phone. And so basically like anything you want to get into, if you have access to someone's phone number or phone, your system swap, then you have access to whatever you want. But isn't it the phone company's fault for making you absolutely connect your email address to your phone? No, so you not that. Email... So like it's it's company's fault that require you to connect like make do like SMS backup or like make you do email backup and don't have right. better options for like two like real two factor authentication. And I'd say maybe two factor authentication done in a way that's decent isn't actually starting to get more popular until just recently. Like just it's becoming more mainstream because of these problems are such a such an issue. And if or you like, go if you live in Oklahoma too and you and you're a victim of sin swapping and you go to your your no, cell phone carrier Oklahoma. And you tell the guy like I'm a I'm a victim of sim swapping. He's gonna be like, "Oh, victim of what?" Yeah, you're right. Uh, yeah, and it's just like the <laughs> hackers <laughs> in the space are way more knowledgeable and advanced than the people selling these plans and sim cards. So, can I hear your Oklahoma voice to say some other stuff? That's a that's a clean Texas actually experience I had, <laughs> but I'm just picking some obscure place. A uh, sim um, what what what. <laughs> Yeah, I've never, I've never been to uh, like where you go and buy phones or get your phone serviced, and the dude just be like on on his A game, <laughs> super knowledgeable. Yeah. Ever, it's never happened to me. Every time I go in there, they spend forever trying to unlock their fucking iPad. It's like they're fucking t- t- just tapping away on the damn thing, and it's like oh, it never wakes up. It just, oh, it's so clunky, and it's like what how. I feel like you should have figured this out by now. Push the fucking home button. Push you do the this button. Every day. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, yeah. I mean, they need training, but the thing is, is like it affects our community right now, and until it starts affecting everyone, like if you know, then they'll get the training and they'll provide a different security. Uh, yeah, that's a big part of it. I think is that we built an entire industry around storing value on your computer or like on someone else's computer and in, in, in cases like exchanges and custodial wallets. And it's it's non-refundable, right? So you can't just call your bank account and be like, hey, my my credit card got stolen, so uh cancel that shit and give them my money, but it, that's not mm-hmm. gonna cut it. So mm-hmm. because of that, these types of attacks have become really, really, really profitable. And people are still that's the thing is that people, they're going to learn. Crypto is not like your bank account. And if you're keeping all that stuff on like a Coinbase, which, by the way, is an exchange, well, then it's susceptible. But if you have other means to like, you know, hardware wallets, uh, some cold wallets, then you're OK. Are they going to learn, though, or are they going to just be like, you know what? This isn't for me. Well, I mean, if they went in on these gains. <laughs> No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> if, we're, if we're talking about a GPP and I'm telling them like, oh, you need to get a hardware wallet so your exchange doesn't get hacked. Oh, by the way, you need to do this with your phone so you don't get SIM hacked. Okay, like, well, like, it depends. Once again, it depends. How much money are they putting in? They're throwing in a good portion of their of their life savings? Well, they should probably take some steps to secure it as opposed to just being like, I don't know. Northwestern Mutual person takes care of it. Okay. No, but, but if we, but if we keep adding the the like possible Oklahoma problems voice. in crypto and we just pile them up, like you need to do this, and then you also need to do this, and then you need to do this. Well, I agree. It needs, need to get, it needs to get easier, but like it's They're gonna not get that off. hard. You can follow directions. Yeah, I mean, can I use Oklahoma man voice? You can do whatever you want. I, I mean, I reckon it's pretty easy. I like Cello's ver- version better. But... <laughs> I reckon it's it's pretty easy if I just read the instructions on the box. I mean, it is like I tell people I told people to get Ledger Blues and yeah, they get a little nervous, but then they figure it out on their own. 
because that's kind of how I teach sometimes. It's like, oh, can you walk me through this? No, man, read. Read. Okay. <laughs> watch a video on YouTube. Like, Watch a video, read the instructions. Yeah. Do, do like a small so. amount and get comfortable with it. And then there you go. If you have, When you have a question, a specific question, ask it. Yeah. There's plenty of people hate spending there. money to hold their money. I don't, I don't, I have no, I have no remorse for people who are lazy. People already spend money to hold their money. They just, the banks are so good at what they do. They've massaged that pressure off of everyone. Right. They're like, Oh yeah, like no, this doesn't cost money at all. We're just gonna hold your money for free. Yeah, right. <laughs> we, we have to have sympathy for the lazy because the lazy are gonna make up the majority of the of the mass adoption. Okay, there's there's two things to this in my opinion. Uh I don't know, King of making false dichotomies. Let's see. Uh like one, we as the builders the developers, the people who are in charge of the products that people are supposed to be using to secure this value, need to make the appropriate decisions that take advantage of as much security as possible without informing the user of those things. Like, if it, if it's not if it doesn't need to be an option, it should just be done, and that requires some comp complex thing to happen. We should be doing that, but in a way that the user doesn't even know or care that it's being done. It just, just by by consequence of us doing it, the product is safe. But they don't they don't have to experience it or change anything. On the other hand, we need like the user has to do some things. They have to learn some things because it's a new technology. It's not going to be the same because it, it it fundamentally operates differently. And if you want to invest money and 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 try and secure money then you need to learn something i mean it's not that if, if you if you hold something valuable you learn about it is that not is that not a human thing no i mean how many people have bank accounts and don't know anything about banking because yeah but uh, ooh, because that's they deep, can Cello. they can they can call their bank account they can call their bank maybe they and they get their money maybe back. they don't Maybe they don't value it. Maybe it's just their their numbers that do stuff. But well, that was a part of like what we kind of what we discussed in the early ICO boom, like when people are like making a bunch of money, making a bunch of decisions on what they're investing in, trading things, so on and so forth. And we're like, okay, this isn't going to last forever. But what it is doing is it's creating a lot of young people to start thinking about money in a brand new way, and like thinking about investing, and then how to, how they do like portfolio management and allocation and, and when to buy and what their money's doing and all these different things that I certainly did not grow up doing and I was never taught. And mm -hmm. so like, I think that's a, a big part of this is that people still don't really know how to think about money. And when they just assume that like, I don't know, paycheck gets put in my bank account, and I spend it every month, then like, okay, well, what, what are you going to, what, what type of attitude is that going to be for Making yeah, yourself I mean, a better investor. People don't. People aren't exposed to the like you make your money, make money kind of stuff. Uh, conversations very frequently, and then some people get offended when you do start to discuss things of that nature. Some people don't. Um, but it goes beyond it money. It, it does go beyond money. It's like just digital identity and digital security. Like that's becoming a topic these days with like you know people losing shit on Facebook or you know people getting hacked yeah. and. Their credit scores get get leaked and all that nonsense, right? Like, yeah, that, maybe that becomes, the grand. Go ahead. So that just becomes a topic of interest. We're like, oh, how do I secure my identity? Because apparently, the people who I've been trusting to do so really suck at it. Maybe the grand awakening is coming, where everybody that's on the internet is going to say, "Wait a second, why don't I just go anonymous?" Damn. And like, because that's how the internet. Like, no, I know you can't like. I know you can't, you can go pseudonymous at best to like the other none the wiser. But I mean, when I was a kid, it was just an understanding that when you operate on the internet, you never tell anyone who you are. You just don't. Or you didn't like, have that social media the, when you were a kid. Exactly. You know, that was the thing that came and changed the internet forever. But I mean, is it ever going to go back to like, you know what? I'll just exist as ninja man 79 and i'm okay with that no. no nobody really has to know it's never, it's never happening again so much is relying upon your digital identity these days for 
access to services, uh, storing your identity so that you don't have to carry it around with you all the time, like, like, and building up reputation for the things that you purchase it's, online it's, slash sell online just, slash operate as a business. I didn't think we were ready. It's just causing so many problems for us to not just be Ninja Man 79 and operate under those pretenses and then have a whole separate internet for being yourself where, you know, nothing can happen and there's strict rules around it because it's just like, it's, there's so much fuckery. Like I have friends sometimes are like, Hey, is this you? I'm like, no, it's not me. And they're like, well, somebody's trying to be you. And I'm like, well, I mean, you know, it's not me. Like that's like a, that's like a 12 year old picture. Yeah. And like, it happens in the family as well. Like we'll have like, like fake profile. My dad has like fake profiles of people that are like, they're not him, but they like send us friend requests and what? message us and stuff. Really? Yeah. Yes. This this happens, Corey. Like people will take your identity and try to fake out your family and friends. I wonder if that's happened to my family. I feel like they'd say something. I hope that's not happening yeah. to my family. Is they are susceptible them. to it? Ask but if like you last year, there was. Go ahead, Chilla. If Corey never interacts with his family on Facebook, and then all of a sudden he's inviting them to barbecues on Facebook to be like, hmm, yeah, something's up. Would they? Or would they? They'd be like, wow, this is a brand new Corey. Yeah. <laughs> Corey is really getting into the family again. <laughs> he invited me to a barbecue. No, and I'm not in uh, where Corey lives. I don't want to say where he lives. Um, but yeah, I don't know. It's just. Security is going to be a tough nut to crack. It's, no, it's, I don't, it's never not going to be a thing, in my opinion. It's always going to be difficult, uh, and there's always going to be problems, and it's and it needs to get better. But yeah. people need to take, I don't know, a modicum of their day to learn something new to protect themselves. Yeah, as you can't to stop just crime from happening. Fine. That that needs to be what you lead with, actually, Cello. To uh, to to Oklahoma man is they'll say like, well, I got this hardware wall it wasn't supposed to do with it and you say look first things first um do, would you like just leave your bank account open on a computer for anyone to walk up and send stuff and do whatever with and say oh, i reckon not you say all right well we need to teach you how to secure yourself all right so you so so you don't lose this money all right you yeah. just got to teach people what's important is like how do you, you teach know? them, though? I don't know. Here's nine things that could help them. Oh, first things yeah. first. <laughs> I found I found an infographic here. The first thing, losing your private key. What's the effect? You can't access your crypto. What's the solution? Back up your private keys in multiple ways. Have redundancy with here's that. A, okay, there's an addendum to that. Uh, the more places you back up your private keys, the more chances... They can be stolen, right? Yes. So like, take, that take, is take that take note account, right? So, like, if I write it down, this is just a like way to think about this. If I write something, if I write my private keys down, like, say, so my seed phrase for my hardware wallet, if I write that down and put it in a safe, and there's no other place for it, there is one way in which someone can get that that seed phrase. They get into that safe and take that. Let's say if I do this five times. There is now five different ways in which someone can get my seed phrase and steal all my money. And so I'm saying the more times you back this stuff up and put it different places, especially if it's like different ways of backing things up. Say, for instance, I encrypt it and put it under the cloud storage. Someone can then get in my cloud and, and maybe brute force that, that encryption and take it. Uh, say I give it to my family and, and my mom puts it on her phone and stores it on, the, on her phone for some reason. Like, I'm saying, like, you need to take that into account the more when you when you back things up yeah. is the more times you do it, the, the the attack surface is typically what they call it, it increases. Yeah. Cello, do you want to hear something bananas? Yeah. What I did to protect us when we were mining Litecoin. So this is many moons ago. We used to mine Litecoin. And Cello and I were in a joint mining venture together. <laughs> we were pros <laughs> we were prospectors. I took <laughs> the private key copied it on paper laminated it but i split i chunked it up into four different chunks first and then i codified it so i knew the sequence of how to put it back together cut it in four chunks and then i taped one to the inside of my pop's briefcase 
I taped one to the back of the refrigerator. I taped one to the inside of Ronan's dog cage. And then I had one on my desk. And that's how stupid I was about my security. Because <laughs> I thought I was being like so, so like James Bond with my shit. Yeah, that's dangerous. Reality. <laughs> that's huh? dangerous. <laughs> yeah, I was like, this is. I, but I had, a, I I had another. Probably, if I found, if you lost one of those and needed to recover it, I could yeah. probably recover that. Yeah, because it's, it's only what thirty six characters or whatever. So it's not that depends, but, right? Yeah, that's true. It does depend. Um, but I also had the the actual code, like the whole thing, backed up on my computer just in case. That was the in Is case I delete my file? app data folder. There's a plain it was text in a file file that was encrypted with a password. But I'm assuming that's a yes to your. Then no, it wasn't. Question. If you encrypted it, then it wasn't plain text. Do you know okay. that that whole venture yeah, is profitable now at, at the current Litecoin prices? Oh, yeah, yeah. It, it was very profitable. It's been very profitable, actually. Well, so. up until recently. Mm. It was a well, break even Litecoin's, venture. And it was like $3 yeah. when we were mining Litecoin. Yeah, that was a it long went, time ago. Yeah. When we got done, I remember it was at like $33. And we were like, what? I bought you out at a great price. Yeah. Looking no back on it. Looking no back on it, it's a great price. Yeah. But um anyway, yeah, the times like have changed. <laughs> yeah, I like the times have changed. Experience. I think that was a very cool that was like one of the coolest things I've done. So it was really cool, man. Like start turning on my minor uh while bef- the, like while I was at school teaching. I'd just look at my phone and see like, oh, I guess it's not mining. Let me hit reset real quick and then I'd look look at my phone again and see that oh the hash goes the hash rate. It's up and running again. I, try, cool. I tried to sell it. Uh, I just I saw the video card on Craigslist, and he was like, "Oh yeah, I'm going to use this for uh, World of Warcraft. Why are you selling it?" And I was like, "Oh, I, I I mined Litecoin with it." And he goes, "Oh, so that shit was just constantly just on, getting beat up every second of the no, no thanks. I don't want that. <laughs> yeah, I had the hardest time selling that shit. Yeah, you're right because it it basically like I destroyed a bunch of GPUs because I would <laughs> I would push them to the limit. I kept tweaking yeah. with them." Trying to like maximize efficiency, and in the process of doing that, I probably just burned them out. Yeah, they they destroy video cards because I tried to play Final Fantasy fourteen with some friends after we that venture with one of those video cards, and every single I guess you call them raid, my screen would just go black, but my character was on the screen, and so they're like, "D, what are you doing?" I was like, "I have no uh, clue what I'm doing." You're in the shadow. What do you guys realm. see? I'm doing. And they're like, well, you're, "You're you're just running into the wall," and I was like, "Well." You know, I can't see that. So, um, but anyways, um, that's how crazy I got with security for us, Chell. So we would have been just fine. But let's get back to the list, right? So uh, number two, storing critical information unencrypted. The effect, attackers, malware, and keyloggers can steal your information. Hence why I encrypted the folder where I kept the private key. Solution, encrypt all critical information, private keys, seed phrases, etc. Okay, cool. Number How are you supposed to do that? Like a GPP, you how are they going to go encrypt it, stuff? Okay, here it is. You take your private key. That's not even easy to do, by the way. Exporting a private key from like a desktop wallet, it takes some a little bit of coding knowledge. You got to kind of go to like seed the, phrases these days. Everything's seed phrases these yeah. days. Okay, so take your seed phrase. Put it in a folder on your computer that you trust. Don't make it too stupid, right? Don't make it like... Don't name it like uh, Kathy Ireland, right? And you're gonna forget what what the damn folder is even for, or where it is, or maybe you won't. I don't know. That's a Put that's a strong a window into Dee's head right there. Well, she was an attractive <laughs> woman, okay, and unnecessary rough or necessary roughness. That movie that's unnecessary my roughness. It was. I okay. think it was necessary roughness. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. When she was like in that t-shirt, but anyways. Uh, <laughs> You put it in a folder, right click it, password protect the folder, and there you go. I don't That's even like the, that. I don't even I don't like that. Encrypting the folder. Well, well, okay. Well, then, how, what Obey do you like? Obey the infographic. Uh, I guess that's the easiest way to do it. I mean, it at least gives you a password, but then you're going to remember your password. But you should be doing yeah. that anyway. I mean, I, I, I don't know. For, for the easiest way possible, I say use a password manager and store your, your, your seed phrases inside your, your password manager. And make sure your password yeah. manager is backed up with a Yubi key, like a or at least like some t- some type of two factor authentication, Google Authenticator, Authy, Yubi key, whatever. 
Well, the the guy that if we all know this, the guy who got SIM swap hacked for six figures, didn't he work at like Epicenter or some some I legitimate forget, place? Was, I forget where it was, but it was like you should know. And that's the thing. That's a difference between knowing and being lazy. He knew better. Mm-hmm. He was just lazy because he, he was like, "This isn't going to happen to me." But these attacks, like, they're just yeah. they're 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 very broad spectrum attacks. Are they the, like? Can they know how much money is in, is in an exchange before? Like maybe he wasn't targeted because of who he was, but how much money he had in his account? Uh, no, it's more along yeah. the lines of like social engineering and going after people who uh, act a certain way online and give up information about themselves. Oh, so you, like you could be hacked, mm-hmm. but when they find out you have like four bucks in your Coinbase, they'll be like, yeah. "Oh, well, fuck that yeah. guy." Like, so that, like, like if you're stunting, I mean, look at what happened to wasn't that Balaji? Stunting like my daddy. That Who? one dude that like you, you did like cover art for, and he stiffed you. Uh, you're gonna have to be more specific. It's a big I've timer a lot of ICOs. Those. That was like, but he, oh like, yes, Moon, Moon yep, Lambo. Yeah, yep, yep. yeah, I know Moon exactly. What you're talking about. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. like he was just like stunting. It's like okay, you're making yourself a target. Belina, that's yeah, 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 yeah. I'll be stunned like my daddy. Damn. Um, so these, so these hackers, they'll just randomly go into people's accounts, and then when they see six figures, they're probably just their pants get tight. Well, it depends. Like yeah, I, I looked at the IP, uh, the attacker IP of the guy that that messed with your R accounts a while back, and mm-hmm. it, it was a it, that was an act of uh, basically like circumstance. Like he just had this like broad spectrum probe that would try and find uh known vulnerabilities in servers yeah and then took advantage of them and then mm. basically said give me give me bitcoin or you don't, you don't have it back but like the way he wasn't very good at it so i just took our account back well i, I think i you know i want to pat myself on the back too i froze my account that was the first thing i did and i think a lot of people panic and they don't think about that yeah that was so the, the right fact that he the fact that he was trying to ransom my wife means that he <laughs> He was he wasted valuable time. Well, he Bullshit. also like tried to be you to your wife. Can you go to the details like, about that? Yeah, please, do. please. Uh, do I want to? Does that make me more susceptible to yeah, vulnerability? You're, you're fine. Not 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 okay. those. The, the, not like the super wife, details. Wifey details. Just like like, like part, what the guy but... said to your wife. Oh, okay. So yeah. yeah. So he was he got control of my G chat and he he uh, messaged my wife because my wife has the same last name as me. So he connected the dots, smart hacker. So he said, uh, hey, sweetie. Uh, and then Sheena was like, yes. And then he goes, yeah, honey, just want to let you know that uh, I've been cheating on you. And, um, uh, you know, I'm really sorry. And she goes, yeah, th- this this isn't Marcello because he doesn't call me sweetie and honey. And he goes, <laughs> well, I have, I have control of, of his life. And if he wants it back. That would be one Bitcoin. It's a hard turn. It's like, damn it. It was a hard turn. <laughs> That's some Dexter's Laboratory <laughs> villain type shit. Like, what kind of lame ass villain is that? He goes from soft <laughs> to Doctor Doom in uh, one response. Hey, honey. Hey, you, sweetie. You've seen cheating on your bitch. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let me get the uh, deed to your land. Like, nobody <laughs> talked the way that guy was talking. So let me it get was... the deed to your land. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so, number, uh, number three on this on this uh, number three ways to lose your cryptocurrency. So keeping number your crypto three. on an exchange. The effect, effect is go ahead, dude. You want you clearly want to say this? Go ahead. Yeah, I'm reading. Man, we're starting a thing. <laughs> effect the exchanges are are highly target targeted and centralized points of failure. Solutions store your cryptocurrency with a hardware wallet. That's one we've said time and time again. Number four, using weak and or reused passwords. In effect, your accounts can easily be taken over. Yeah, if your password is like Bitcoin one two three or like I am good, I don't know. It's don't be stupid. Five, not using two factor authentication. Effect only your username and password is needed to access your account. That's bad. Six, falling victim. And so cello to your point where it's like, oh, this stuff is too difficult. Well, back when we started, if I if I said two FA to a GPP, their eyes would roll. But now that's becoming such a standard practice on the internet, you know that people just know it. Like I said, you know, I think I was talking with. I also, uh, I want to back that up in that um, in most in most cases, in almost in almost all cases, other than some 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 edge ones, um, when someone finds out that you have two factor authentication enabled. They stop. They move on. Most hackers yep. 
the vast majority of hackers are are, are are like trying to perform crimes of opportunity. They're not you're not specifically targeted. Or once they get you, to a certain hurdle, it becomes way more difficult, and their skill set can't get past it. So they go they, they make they go they stop doing it. Just having two factor authentication on almost on everything that you have is usually enough to get you to make to make you safe. But it's almost like if you have seven locks on your front door, then the burglar knows something inside is valuable. No, two FA is not that big of a deal. It's just like I think it's yeah. it's now it's now common knowledge that username and password is not enough to secure yourself to secure your digital identity and and the things you hold sacred digitally. You need more. If you, if it, if it is valuable, it should have multi factor authentication because we have a ton of different ways to do it. Yeah. And now companies are forcing it on you. So even even the fact that they're forcing it on you is is enough to say like, okay, I should be doing this. What if crypto made a new wave and we called it three FA? That's oh. called multi factor. Oh, sorry. They called it three way security. It's just it's mm. MFA multi factor yeah. authentication. <laughs> so like for like oh, your bank account, yeah. you should have multi factor authentication. How many factors of authentication do you have? Mm. Yeah, if I was a hacker and you had like four different things, I would be like, hey, let me invite my hacker buddies over. This guy has something valuable. This guy I don't know if hackers are just going to be like, oh, he's got 2FA. Time to move along. You'd be surprised. Some of them they will. will. Most of them. Yeah. Because they're right, using, they're using kits and they're just trying to like see where the kit works. And if it doesn't work, they move on because it, yeah. like, it requires them to change their behavior and learn something new. Oh, so, so they're not what are you going to do? What, they do? what are you going to do? Are you going to are you going to try and learn something new to get one person, or use the same shit you know to go check other people? Yeah, it's better to do the ladder, ladder. But six, well, go ahead. Yeah. So no, go ahead. Numero seis, uh, falling victim to phishing scams. That's ph. Uh, effects you can be exploited and your crypto can be stolen solution don't click on suspicious links or send upload your private keys anywhere this one i feel like is is easy to follow for people our age who were birthed into the internet wait what's my bane voice uh you nearly experienced the internet i was born in it like we just know when something looks fishy on the internet you'd be surprised like, just fishing, fishing campaigns are getting incredibly sophisticated like oh, really? incredibly sophisticated. So basically, the key to that one is don't click on links. If someone tries to get you to like log in through a link, don't click on it. Just go to the website yourself. Yep. There you go. It's uh, so much easier to click that link. And then get your shit stolen. <laughs> <laughs> Number seven, handing over your API keys. Effect, you could give control of your account to a malicious party. Solution, only give out API keys to trusted parties if you absolutely have to. Number eight, downloading unknown software. Malware can steal your credentials, keys, or replace addresses when you send crypto. Solution, don't download unknown software. Update antivirus, double-check public addresses when sending crypto. Number nine, installing unknown browser plugins. The effect, Oof, malicious plugins can steal your credentials and keys and monitor your uh, stuff. So yeah, like the same way when we all used to use Internet Explorer when we were kids, and you would download 30 things into that ribbon and think that your internet experience was so juicy. Yeah, don't do that anymore, ever. Just don't. Eh, unless you, you, you should know what it is, right? The plug-in, right? Weather don't, bug. Yeah, don't get weather bug <laughs> up there. Oh, man. You know? Everyone had weather bug. Yeah. That, stupid, <laughs> that stupid sound would just yes. keep going off. And you're like, where the fuck is it? Where the fuck is it? Close it down. <laughs> Anyways, uh, malicious plugins can steal your credential keys and monitor. So solution, only install trusted plugins and understand the permissions you grant them. Okay. So I do want to give a shout out to this. This is ledgerops.com that put this infographic together. And it, it, it's, you know, it's nine things, but damn it, if you value this stuff, if you got in, like, we know 99% of you get into this space to make money, Right. So you obviously have that value attached to it. Learn how to secure it and stop being a dumbass. And you person that lost uh, six figures, yeah, man, you got to get on top of that and stop being lazy. I bet it's like one of those situations where it wasn't a lot to start out with and then it grew into a lot. And it was like, eh, it's probably fine. Yeah, like like, right. like me, right? right? Like I, I, I didn't, I probably didn't secure a lot of things 
early on as the price started rising because it's kind of like funny money. It doesn't feel real until you like take it out and do something with it. Yeah, just the number keeps growing. That, that's that was my experience. Is like the number just kept growing, and I was like, man, this is getting out of hand. All right, back to back to work, and then <laughs> that was it. Right? I was like, I guess we'll see what happens tomorrow, and then. Like it got to the point where like, man, I should really, I should really take some time out of my day to like make sure this is all okay and like safe. I remember in the last bull run, you went into the chat and you guys, are you guys seeing this? This is ludicrous. It just keeps going up. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, it was, it was good timing. Like guys, this Um, isn't, this is not, this is crazy. (laughs) Yeah. What the the reason it was good time for me is because at one point I like worked at another firm. And I was the Bitcoin guy, and like everybody makes fun of you, right? When you're the Bitcoin guy, and like, oh, look at this guy, it's funny money. And then like I was as I as they were talking to me, the price was like jumping two thousand dollars, and I was like, yeah, it's crazy, right? Funny money, huh? So lunch on me? That's right. No, you're paying your own damn lunch, All right? You're paying <laughs> you're your like, own I quit, damn quit, bitch. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I quit. I'm out. Okay. Um, yeah, so that that's a little bit of security tips from not us, but we wanted to share that from Ledger Ledger Pros. On top of that, um, if you have questions about those, you want to know what any of those things mean, uh, you want more context or specifics around them, join the Slack and ask me. And I and there are a few other people in the Slack that will be more than happy to go into detail about yeah. any of those, in, why they're a thing, why they're a problem, how they're a problem, how to protect yourself from them. Join the Slack. We'll answer those mm-hmm. questions. I will answer. Yeah, I will answer those security questions all day long. Yeah, there's a new guy in the Slack that wants to join us. I'm not sure if he's going to actually live up to that. Oh, you're talking about Tim? Yeah, he's yeah, never been on the show. The you want to open up the lines right now? I feel like we need like a sound, like a transition sound. <laughs> oh, someone put open something up in the, the security hacks channel. Let's see. Ledger uh, found undisclosed seed extraction attack on Treasure and clones like Crypto Keep Key. Not patchable. Oh, wow. Check this out. Open up the lines. Open up the lines. The lines are open. Um,. What I will say uh, is, I'm almost cello. You finally you've turned. I think it takes a long time for you to turn me on to things, but I think I would like to absolve some personal risks for giving absolutely great investment advice. Because there's people all over the world giving investment advice every day, and the the repercussions are small. Like. They are, and I feel like I give really modest, good advice to this stuff, and I have for years, which is put no more than 5% of your cash flow into Bitcoin or other cryptocurrency because it's an extremely high-risk asset. That's just good advice, is it not? Yeah. I I listen to other crypto podcasts, and they all open up their podcasts with, this is not financial advice, and then they go and give financial advice for two hours. Yeah, it's just just a way to cover your ass uh, for legal legal purposes. That's that's all it is. So it's we're just, gonna, it's, you know it's comical. People can though. sue like, you. Like we're we're United States, man. We're litigious. People will sue you because they made stupid decisions based on based something on, you said. If somebody like, brings D to court because he says don't invest more than you're willing to lose and maybe put five percent in there, I don't they think go and put like thirty, th- and they go and put like seventy percent in there. Yeah. But the thing is, Cello, what I'm trying to avoid is the cost of the headache, right? Right. Or just the time of the headache. Me. Yeah. Somebody because. That's where they win, right? Because if you're not on top of your shit when they're like sending you all these like legal documents and shit, then you could just lose because you know you're like, well, what? I didn't even know that happened. Somebody sued me, right? And so you, you know, that's how that goes. And then you got to pay all the legal fees, get a lawyer, and all the stuff. So what I will say is hashtag not investment advice, but at the same time. <laughs> I mean, somebody sent us. Someone paid off their their mortgage and sent us a case of beer. He didn't have to say, "Hey, uh, you know, not investment advice, but I paid off my house." Thanks. You know, he, it was I just think like, he actually hey. put that hashtag in the note he sent me. Did he? <laughs> he put hashtag not investment Something advice. Something like that. I feel like that's what <laughs> happened. The beer you was know, good hashtag, too. Uh, hashtag not investment advice. Five uh, percent of your cash flow, right? So if a hundred dollars come in, take five dollars and, and and put it. Towards crypto. I am I am taking money out though as uh, I'm enjoying it a little bit. I actually paid off a car note last week with crypto. So hooray! So we have a caller who joined us. Yeah. 
Who is that? Hello. 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 Who is that? Who are you? Hi, it's Reem. <laughs> Hi, hey, Reem. What's oh, up? Hey, what's up? Hi. We were just about to give financial advice, but right before we said that, right before we do that, we were going to say it's not financial advice, so we don't get sued. <laughs> have any Have any so, financial advice you would not um, like to give? Are you ready for that? Oh, I'm ready for that. Always. Yeah. <laughs> so, what financial um, advice would you not give someone? Is that a question for me? Yeah. Yeah, it is. We were. Oh. <laughs> um, putting me on the spot here. Um. I don't know. Well, what do you guys propose? Okay, this is what I would say. I I like giving the one I just gave is that don't no more than five percent. Uh, no more than five percent of your cash flow should go towards risky assets. There you go. That's 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 a golden one. Oh, here's, here's my, another one. Oh, go ahead, Cello. I'm gonna I'm gonna counter that, and you can sue me. You can do whatever you want. But if we're all here, if we're doing a podcast for four years, we obviously believe in in crypto and blockchain technology that's going to thrive and profit pour a whole bunch of money into it <laughs> to it's, cello it's going to double and it's going to triple don't do more than you're than you can lose i mean make sure you can pay all your bills but pour a bunch of money into it we're all here week after week because we believe in it we know it's not going to fail so why be <laughs> modest if you sue us, uh, sue Cello, okay? If you no, sue- no, no, no. There's no us involved. Just, just sue Cello. Yeah, and just when you send thank you notes, don't CC Corey and D. Yeah, sue Cello. I want um, it all. Uh, another thing, uh, Hiroj left, or Hiroj is here, and then somebody else joined. I was going to say something. Um, I was going to say, as people are joining, we might lose bandwidth, so we might want to cut our video. All right. Yeah. Yeah. So if you're just in my bedroom. if you're just joining up, you might want to cut your video because uh, we're gonna lose bandwidth, and we don't want the the sound quality to drop. Here, somebody type that to Rosia. There she goes. Right, nice. She's jamming. Um, um, so I would say uh, another bit of not financial financial advice: have hard percentages in your portfolio and rebalance when you've had success. Right. That's what Mr. Captain Buffett does. That's what all these great investors do is you say, okay, I'm going to have X percent of Bitcoin, X percent of Litecoin, X percent of Ether, X percent of, you know, die, whatever it is. And then when you hit these hodl plus moments where you could take a little bit off the top and rebalance, you go back to those percentages. You keep, keep saying die. I want to, I'm going to reiterate that die is a stable coin. It's supposed to stay at a dollar. It's not an investment Yeah, it's, tool. it's but it's still a cash position, right? Because it's something that's liquid within the space. Yeah. So you'd also you'd always have a cash position. Sure, that's fine. Right? Oh, okay. That's so, a, that's um, not, like I don't want people thinking they should just go buy die because it's going to moon, right? That's not the case. Yeah, it's not die's what it's not going to moon. Die's not going to. Oh yeah, I didn't say that. Um, also, not investment investment advice. The Hoddle Plus strategy. If you. Uh, uh, you know, the, if you if you can experience extreme uh, changes in your personal life from any recent changes in the price, perhaps you should take advantage of that to help change your life and not hold on to a dream. I don't know. I know that's very different than what most people in Bitcoin would say. They will say, "Hold until I die." But uh, all right, now based on based on that quality. Not investment, investment advice. Reem, coming at you. <laughs> I'd say don't put in what you can't afford to lose. Okay. Par for the course is good. That's, that's, a, that's another that's good. That's subjective. What if a really rich guy puts in a million dollars and loses it all? He can, he still can afford it. Mad. That's fine. That's always yeah, subjective. Yeah. Yeah. All of this no, should no, be no. very subjective. It's very personalized, right? Like if, if a, you're not typically, if someone is investing, they're investing for themselves. They're not investing for somebody else. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So, um, but you should know. Put some- yep. And then, like, uh, if you don't know how to calculate percentages, uh, you got no business investing. All right, you need to go read some books. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to be so frank. I would say, I would <laughs> but- say, like, one thing you should be doing is if if you if what you've put in ends up growing, and 
and you're like you you want it to grow more, but the amount can make actionable change in your life, like se- like severe change in your life for the better, then do it. There's no reason to hold on to money that mm-hmm. or like paper money that can make drastically changes for the better in your life and you don't do it. I think it's an irresponsible use of an investment. Yep. And don't uh don't listen to family members that tell you to sell low because my family yeah. almost screwed me and they got in my head one weekend. They were close. They were like, it's, you know, it's just taking so long. It's not going to happen. And, and you should just, you know, s- sell what you have and pay off, you know, a portion of your loans. And I was like, you guys are fucking going to going to fuck me over. I'm not listening to you. And I'm glad that I didn't. So don't listen to people that don't know what the hell they're talking about. Listen to people that do know what they're talking about, been in the space for a while, have an educated opinion, and take that into your own research and make your best decisions. What are they called? D-Y-O-R? Do your own. No. Yeah, do your own research. Do your own due diligence. So um, that's here. it. That's enough of that. Uh... But there's a reason why I wanted to say that. Okay. Corey, before I wanted to say that is because I paid a gentleman to do a little – do a little uh, data scrubbing for me. Oh, that's right. And and as it stands, there's a 76% chance if you invest in Bitcoin, the next year, the money you put into it is going to be worth more. Can you explain that? that I can't low. explain that. That you, seems low? Are you, you can? Yeah. Are you, the, you taking crazy pills? I mean, 76% I'm, chance? That seems low. Seems that's like guaranteed. That's the machine. That's the machine you go to Vegas and only play because you know you're going to have a great time if you're winning seventy six percent of the time. I mean, seventy six percent is good odds. I just feel like it's higher. It's almost guaranteed. Okay. Wow, you are right, ex- you are explain, a man with very explain high what you standards. did and how you came to that number because I could just okay. say shit like that and not mean anything. So we got all of the closing prices for Bitcoin going all the way back to two thousand and twelve, right? And we put them at like midnight at the same day at the same month, going all the way back to 2012. And then I took the year over year percent changes month over month in those months going back to 2012. So January 31st, 2012, 2013, 2014, right? So on and so forth. Did that for every month. And I tracked those percentage changes or well, Yagi did. Shout out to Yagi. You need a shout out anyways as being a patron. Uh, he and and every single year over year, except for what is it? Twenty four percent of those months was positive. Some of them four digit percent positive. Right. So I don't have the data in front of me. I should have the data in front of me. But. So then what I did is said, okay, here's all these year over year percent changes. And let me count all of them up and find which ones you would have lost on is 26% of those year over years. And then 70, sorry, 24% and then 76% of the time. So if you'd put money in Bitcoin on March 31st, the next March 31st, you would have had significant gains. That's, that's, that that's based on historical data. So you're assuming based on, based on that data. that it's going to continue that way. That's your that's your I assumption. Mean, it's, a, it's a safe bet, man. We make those bets in life, though. When I go on a certain highway, I assume it's not going to be as congested as the other highway when the other highway is congested. Okay. That's, when I, it's based on it's based on the the market cap of all the stuff continuing to grow for it, it, as it, and expand as it's expanded. In absolutely. The past. It's, but it's that's not something on, that can happen forever. <clears throat> It's not something that. Can so you're saying forever. in the near future, over the next few years, you still feel like that's that 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 I do will be as good or better. I feel like the percentage changes aren't going to be astronomical. Like those four, some of them were stupid. Like wow, somebody made four thousand percent year over year. That's fucking bananas. And that was back earlier. No, yeah. So that's a good point, Corey. That's another trend that I noticed that I didn't map out is that the percentage gains are getting smaller, which is what you expect as more people start to get on the train. Right. So they went ridiculous back in like 2013 to 2014 of like 4,000% year over year gains. And now they're down to like the three digits, which is still fucking stupid by the way. But 
I plan on I plan on actually plotting this, by the way, and 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 us releasing the plot on like Twitter or Instagram or something, so that people can see what we're talking about. And uh, we actually know what we're talking about. We're not three goons. (laughs) So, um, uh, yeah. So that to me was very interesting, and that's why I say hashtag not investment advice slash kind of I don't know is that Bitcoin actually the the train and the any notion out there that that Bitcoin. And I'm saying Bitcoin because the other altcoins, uh, they don't I think their market's not mature enough to even do stuff like this um, is not a good investment is fucking ludicrous. You can tell that you can look them in their eyes and say you are a dumb person, especially if it's like if you're if you're following your previous advice or your previous notion that. You should only be doing a small percentage allocated towards high value, like high risk assets, right? Like that's five percent. Well, that's because I'm a that's because I'm a conservative, right? Yeah, but like going all in is is could be a dangerous game because what you're not seeing, what's not being captured in in that in that data and that analysis you just gave, or like the, the prediction or whatever you say, is the drastic up and downs. And when you put like you may be caught in one of those things that drops from month to month, going from yeah, going there from was a like, rough year. You know, a couple like going down a couple thousand dollars or a massive percentage of the current evaluation, and people getting scared and losing their money because that happens a lot. Yeah, I actually so I brought up the analysis. I couldn't at re, in real time. I couldn't remember where the link was, but I just found it in Slack. And the the rough years were 2014, 2015. Um, so November Ooh. had you invested. Had you invested in 2013 November, you would have lost 60, 66% of your money the next November. And so December... Lost on paper. Lost on paper, right. Um, and then, of course, everyone knows the the bear market that we just went through. But what's neat about this is I hope this pattern continues for the next 10 years is that you get one just astronomical green year, and then you get the bad red year. You get two neutral years of modest gains, and then you get um then you start to have a green year again so um but anyways it was interesting uh i wanted to say hey be careful with your money but hey here's how this asset's actually performed in the past so if anybody you know you see on tv shows all the time and they make fun of it like oh you're in bitcoin you must be broke huh and it's like no quite the opposite like bitcoin is a great investment bitcoin is a great investment so there if it is done wisely. There we go. There's the caveat. So we can move on from that. Hey, Wayne, uh, welcome to the show. Hey, you guys sound great. I don't know if it's just dialing in for the first time with this app. Your voice, did Dimitri did get a get a new microphone or something? I've been wor- I've been working on my radio voice, Wayne. Oh, it's smooth, buttery, and salt, sultry. So that's great. <laughs> so I've never been buttery and sultry. sultry. Never been called sultry before, but I'll take it. I'll take it so, with a smile. So, aren't our microphones better than yours too? Yeah, uh, just not, yeah, not calibrated yeah, appropriately. Uh, yeah. I think this would be a good time to, to introduce Reem to like to the sh- to like the, the podcast network. Yeah, Reem, are we putting you on the spot too much this morning? I feel like you hopped in here and you call getting... in. You're getting you're getting <laughs> called out. I'm feeling the love. I appreciate it. <laughs> um. <laughs> Hello, everyone. I'm Reem. I've been popping in and out over the past couple of years. Um, it's always nice to come back and listen to you guys chat. Oh, you're coming out with a show, aren't you? That is in development, absolutely. Um, for anyone interested in design, I am plot. I have a plot going on that is design centric, thanks to you guys. So, yeah, I'm excited to see where it goes. Give us a, give us like a, an idea of like what that means. What does it mean to have like a design centric show? What are you going into? Oh, okay. Well, if you want to talk about that some more, um, yeah. So you know, I've been kind of in the crypto space since like 2014, 15, back when I was in the finance world because of Bitcoin, and it was just always about technology, which I find is fascinating. I mean, considering how much development has gone over the past few years. But um, the one thing that a lot of people forget is that Bitcoin was done for the people, by the people. And when you do that, you have to be human centric when you're designing solutions um, using this technology. So what I'm trying to do right now is just to remind people that this was done for the people. So we should be designing for the people. And I think design plays a critical role in terms of scalability and adoption. 
Um, I know people like to talk about Coinbase and say it's the devil, you know, it sold its crypto soul. But really, Coinbase is paving the way when it comes to human centricity. Um, people would not contribute or invest in crypto has Coinbase or these, um, you know, evil crypto companies actually made it seamless and user centric for people to actually interact with it, tinker with it um, without, you know, being paranoid or concerned about Silk Road or whatever stupid archaic ideologies are. But uh, yeah, so I'm trying to create a podcast that explains how design played a critical role in user adoption and how it's really critical in the space. So yeah, that's my long winded uh, description of my podcast show, how to make crypto human centric. Like that'll be interesting. And it's one of those situations where like, you're going to have material forever because we're so far behind on that being well done. Uh, that you could probably you could probably spend forever just giving lessons on what has worked, what Absolutely. hasn't worked, what we could possibly do, where things are going, etc. Yeah, we're also growing and learning together, so we're always going to come up with new revelations and discoveries. So you know, design is always going to be working in tandem with engineers as they're developing this technology. It, it would be nice to break the myth of people who think as long as I'm making money, I don't care how it looks, and I, I want to get away from that thinking. Yeah, that's a very na- narrow-minded, you know, view. And like, actually, do know a couple of people conducting research on how, you know, the ICO craze, and um, you know, people that just develop tokens or ICOs just for the hell of it, actually failed miserably. Not because they didn't come up with a good idea, but because they didn't really care about the user. They were just so focused on the monetary aspect. But the ones that actually did have a problem to address, they're the ones who were able to resurface or, you know, stay afloat despite, you know, the crypto winter, but um, yeah, they're, they're trying to solve a problem and design is the way to pave, you know, uh, to success, I suppose. Yeah. And that's uh, what July 1st, that's the target date. Um, let's hopefully that's the plan. Um, <laughs> I know that's kind of uh, coming up, but yeah, that's the plan design first. I mean, well, July 1st. Sounds good. Design. Wayne, you gonna listen to that? You tuning in? Absolutely. Because the two thoughts I had on that is one, you know, it's been nerd money for a long time, as Andreas Antonopoulos would say. And just like email, if if you didn't know Elm or Pine, if you didn't know Elm or Pine or or some of the low level email systems in the late eighties, early nineties, you just you weren't on email until everybody was on it. And so, you know, nerds had a good advantage in Bitcoin as well, because if you could trudge through the, the roadblocks, there was a potential, you know, payoff, not only in, in, you know, the obvious financial terms that people see now, but the accomplishment one gets. But from a design perspective, the second point, the, you know, I, I was also a, a proselyte of Coinbase a lot just because like, hey, look, they're the ones bringing the masses. They're the ones who have an app. They're the ones who make it easy. But the flip side of that is UX is not only just about access, you know, making sure a technology is accessible, but it's also UX is what tilts people one way or the other. So they're going to do whatever's easiest, whether or not it's the right thing in their mind or the right thing for their well-being. So that's why I love it when Andreas and others talk about we need to make security, you know, make security be the default thing that happens. Don't make don't make an option that is, hey, I want this transaction to be secure and make the user do it. Make it secure and make it easy to be, quote unquote, right. And then I think it's just an argument about what's right. Mm-hmm. And uh, Reem's going to explore that. And I think it's going to be. I'm excited to listen to it. I get excited to listen to every, I guess we could say all of our programming on the, on the Bitcoin podcast network. So um, did anybody, has anybody that's called in wanted to speak to anything quick, like bring a topic to the table that we may haven't discussed the show. I know you guys just hopped in, but maybe you hopped in with something that you did want to talk about, or you just kind of want to hang out with us. For me, I just got here as soon as I could. Once I saw the message. Okay. 
want to hang out. I did want to talk about one thing, and Corey, if you're there, unless your dogs are just completely going bananas. What? Because oh, I, I know you're in the uh, the Ethereum world quite heavy, because that's what uh, status builds on, and that's what a lot of people build on. And you know, I um, I don't I just don't have time to keep up with everything. Is there's so many things, but I saw a tweet from someone that that said ETH 4.0. And I thought to myself, what the hell is going on in Ethereum that we are arrogant enough to think we have a 4.0 version? And why are we working towards a 4.0 version when this stuff is barely... It's like an airplane trying to take off that's too heavy. Like, what is going on in that community? So can you fill me in as to what ETH 4.0 nodes are and what the hell is even going on there? That's not a thing. It's just not a thing. I don't know what you saw, but it's not a thing. Okay, cool. That's all I needed to know. We're still working on a lot of the F2.0 beacon chain uh, sharding implementation. That's, that's that's still quite underway and has quite a while to go before it's actually implemented. So, like, not a thing. Okay. That's all I needed to know. I thought I was taking crazy pills when I was, like, what, running well, it's a difficult. That F4 makes it difficult for everybody. Mode. Like, I don't know. It's, 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 it's impossible to keep up with even just what's happening in Ethereum, much less the entire ecosystem. I try my best um, to, to at least get like a broad swath understanding of most of the important things that are happening across the entire blockchain ecosystem, but it's impossible these days. And ongoers who try and see it get lost in the sauce or come up with just like come up with weird shit like F4.0, which isn't a thing. Mm. I love how lost in the sauce is now hit hit mainstream. Great Where'd that so, come from? So, D, it's, I did a quick no Google search, and the only Ethereum 4.0 makes me think that you got trolled or something because it says Ethereum 4.0 will have stateless state transitions, and either that's so incredibly advanced it's going to blow everybody off the charts, or it's just obviously fake. Yeah, maybe it was like an inside joke that people do in public, and I was like, wait, wait, what? No, it's that Twitter for you. Sense. Yeah. Um, good. I'm glad we cleared that up because that seemed like it was a little off. Um, I don't know. I think we've we've kind of ran through all of our talking points. Uh, I know. Do you guys want to? Are we wrapping? We're yep. sitting over a little over an hour at this point. Yeah, we got a parabola to wrap this up. Um, yeah, I got nothing else to talk about except Netflix is getting shittier fast. <laughs> no, I was trying to I was trying to watch something on Netflix last night. My family were like, "What is all this crap? There's nothing good on it." It's like Netflix is just reverting because the other streaming services are going to eat them alive. But anyways, I don't want to get too. I, I have to push back on you on that because I watch a lot of Netflix. There is a ton <laughs> of good. There she on is. <laughs> How did you come and stab back? You brought back the rom com. Have you not seen Always Be My Maybe? Uh, I watched a little bit of it last weekend. It was pretty funny. Okay, uh, they 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 have like what they've done is they've taken like the concept of a boutique video store where like you know there's that one video store in town that has like all the horror flicks or whatever and maybe like all the Hong Kong Kong Fu, Fu films and put it all in one spot. So it's very flavor specific. So you just gotta have to like curate your playlist, if you will, to find. Find oh. your stuff. Oh, that's a beautiful world. It's my fault. Netflix sucks. I like that. Okay. Well, yeah, I will, I will they go. They push on. like really good stuff, and they have training to make it very simple. But if you are looking for something particular, they do have it there for you. There was like this crazy ass like Korean zombie flick. There's a historical play, uh, historical period thing that was like a, a television show. It was like a, a season or two long, and it was amazing. Sounds you like just, I'm boring. Oh. I think the Netflix like. CEOs were like, put on Coming to America and Black Panther, and we've taken care of the black demographic. They will be satisfied. That's not true. What's <laughs> happened is because many of the black shows uh, are still being held up for whatever reason for rights. Because when I used to use a VPN all the time uh, before Netflix nixed that, I could go to the Canadian side or the UK side or anywhere else, and I would watch like Fresh Prince and Good Times and, and Jefferson's and all that. But for some uh, reason, when it comes to black shows in American streaming services, they are not here. I 
don't know the reason why. Uh oh, we don't want to get too deep now. I'm just, I'm just I, uh, saying. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I was. I'm with um, Roger on this one. I think Netflix is great. Plus, they have well, that. I personally won't watch it, but they have uh, they, that that show by Ava DuVernay about the Central Park Five kids. There's oh yeah, great, I heard about that. There's I a great watched. kids sci-fi show that has um, a sci-fi movie that has um, black actors in it, particularly Jamaican, uh, called uh, "See You Yesterday." I mean, there's great okay. stuff on there. Uh, you know what? I will. I will retreat. You know, I will check myself. And, and, if, and, and if they if they end up sponsoring us, Cello will recheck himself too. Cello. <laughs> this episode brought um, to you by Coming to America. There you go. Uh, let's wrap so it up. I, take I think that's it. You're not going to see Coming to America too, which is filming right now. Ooh, I don't I'll know. see it, dude. Coming to America is one of the best movies ever made. You've got to see Coming. To as long America. as someone gets a milkshake thrown at them, I'll watch it. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. What do we do? Uh, the Bitcoin Podcast Network, you can find on the BitcoinPodcast.com or the BitcoinPodcast.network. It's our suite of shows, uh, all kinds of shows, a bullpen podcast, dose of ether, hashing it out, just the headers, which will be dropping before you get to this. Um, thank you as well. Uh, shout out to Wayne, because I think he deserves a shout out via Patreon. I, we give you lots of shots out. We give you lots of shout outs. Shots out. Wayne, we we'll get you shots out, shots outs. Uh, Did I hear shots? Kid. We're gonna have some shots. Let's yeah. Yes. <laughs> Next time I see you, we will have a shot, Wayne. Um, it's uh, but shout out to Wayne. Shout out to Ken. Uh, shout out to the other Ken. Shout out to Yagi. Shout out to. I'm trying to think of everyone on the Patreon. I should. Pre- this is something you probably should prepare before the show. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh, bittersweet announcement. Uh, Crypto Until Infinity is coming to an end after oh, 40 something yeah. episodes. Um, but it's not going to go out, well, you know, uh, on a cliffhanger. He's going to have one final farewell episode. Um, but, you know, if you're not caught up on that show, dig through the archives. But good stuff, that man. show is a wrap. I enjoyed it. It was okay. good while it lasted. Best of luck to him in his future endeavors. Yes. Doing, doing 40 shows is tough in and of itself. Like, people. Everyone in the mall wants to start a podcast, but not everyone like wants to keep doing it and doing it. So thank you, DJ, for going. It was a very long run, and you guys can still listen to his, his show. Uh, oh, he got on. Just this is the one person in the Slack that really wanted to get on. Sam, we're wrapping up. You got to say we got one thing to say. say. Live from New York at Saturday night, and then we gotta go. <laughs> yeah. Do you guys hear me? Yeah, we can. And that's our show. And that's the show. <laughs> no, you you got in right at the end of the show, man. We were just wrapping up. We we apologize. Oh, my my headset hear? was changing signals. Sorry. Okay. Um. Yeah. Sorry, Tim. You got in right at the end. Right at the end of the show, we're wrapping. Oh, this, so. oh cool. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah. yeah cool. I, I was I was dealing with some drama, but yeah, I really appreciate what you guys are doing. I really do. Thanks, boss. Well, thank you, We're going to keep doing it. And next time you can yep. tell us more about that. All yeah, right, we'll, cool. we'll open them up again next week. So, Or sorry, yeah. the week after next. We actually have an interview coming to you guys next week. So, By the Lolly team. La La Lolly Pop. I'm just going to play that song by Lil Wayne in the background the entire interview and see if they... Uh, That's a good way to get pulled anything. off YouTube. That is yeah. a good way to get pulled off YouTube. Yeah, you got to okay. get pulled down, dude. <laughs> uh, the pa- Patreon, please become a patron if you like. We have several tiers, including one, which was for the first month, you get a bag of Flaming Hot Cheetos on us. And we know you guys like those Flaming Hot Cheetos. So uh, let's see. What else do we do, guys? We have a book. Um, if you go to Amazon, you search for us, right? You'll get our book. Uh, in 10 words or less, can you describe Bitcoin, Ether, or Blockchain? Um, we basically took an amalgamation of all of the interviews we did in the first three years of the podcast, and we had a trademark question where he asked, can you describe Bitcoin in 10 words or less? And we took all the responses and we put them together, and it's a really nice coffee table book. If you are into crypto and you don't have this book, you're doing it wrong. You need to get this book. Go to the website, click the book, and then buy it. Um, what else? Guys, am I missing anything? No good. Go listen hey, to the podcast. One, one suggestion, D. What's that? I Wayne? suggest that for those who want to introduce crypto to others, buy a few extra books. They're not expensive, and hand that to somebody 
and say, here you go. Here's what Bitcoin, Ethereum, crypto is and get to know it. I agree with that. I agree with that. Buy 45 books each and then just pass them out on the street and you see people. Right. People appreciate that. Are you saying you don't have 45 friends? Come on. No, yeah. so Bitcoin is really neat when you share it because there is a thrill for someone new when you help them install an app and you send them a tiny bit of Litecoin or, you know, something, you know, as long as the transaction fees are small and they see, you know, they see it come in. Litecoin's a little faster, so you don't have to wait so long. And but the or any of the other, you know, it's kind of smaller, faster cryptos, but something tangible always closes the deal a little bit better. This is true. No doubt. Um, that's that's it, guys. Thank you, Wayne. Uh, thank you, Reem. Thank you, Rosa. Thank you, Tim. Uh, shout out to Zoe Saldana, Zazie Beats, uh, Carla Lewis. Uh, play the outro. Thank you.